Mouse. Here's his mouth right here. He's got a beard like this. This beard, and these represent his horns up here. So there's a horn. There's a horn, and there's his eye, his eye, his nose, and his mouth. Um, let me see about this phone call. I'll take that in a minute. Okay, now we're gonna go from here down here. Now watch. I'm gonna show you an image of a woman. Here's the woman's eye, her eye, and her nose right here. Okay. This is her hair up here. She's got bangs here and bangs here. She also has horns right here. And there's her hair going down on both sides. Now we're going to go from here up to here, right here, and right here. So here's the same woman. There's her eye, her eye, her nose. She's got horns. She's got her hair coming down. And then we're going to go down further. These are her breasts right here, here and here. This is a representation of her private parts, her vagina. And then this is a representation of a Nephilim birth. Okay, football players wear jerseys to show what team they're on, you know? If you're a Viking, you got a Viking on your shirt. Whatever team you're on is, you know, indicative of the jersey you wear. Let's see real quick what team this guy's on. This is the Pope. You're looking at the false prophet. Here's his vestment. There's the same devil I just showed you. There's his eye, his eye, his nose, his mouth, and his beard. And there's his horn right here and his horn going up here. So there's an image of the devil. Here's another image of the devil. So the Pope is wearing a vestment that's got, you know, the devil hanging on both sides of him. Well, let's turn it upside down and see what's going on. When you turn it upside down, it's an image of a Nephilim birth glorifying Lucifer and the fallen angels that bred with human women. That's why they worship the virgin. They worship the virgin because if you were a fallen angel worshiper and that's the devil, you would worship the virgin because that's where you planted your seed. That's where your race got started and that's who you worship. So here you go. Here's the woman. There's her eye, her eye, her nose. And here's her horns, her hair coming down, hair coming down, breast, breast, vagina, and there's the Nephilim offspring. It's right on the Pope. Okay, if that's not enough for you, then I'm going to go back and show you one more thing on the Pope. This was taken out of Newsweek magazine. I got it right over here. I'll probably let you see it just so you know you saw it. Let me see real quick. Just stay with me for a second. I'll tell you when I have to pull it up in a minute. Um, this is out of Newsweek magazine. Let's see. Right here is an image of the evil one. You know, when we say the Lord's Prayer, we say, and protect us from the evil one. Well, you saw the evil one on that whole hieroglyph, but I'm going to show you another representation. Here's his eye in his eye. And there's his nose. And there's his mouth right here. And so, you know, this bottom of his chin. So he's, he's the gold part in his face. Eye, eye, nose, mouth. He looks pretty PO'd. He doesn't look very friendly. Now I want you to go down here. Right there. There's the evil one right there. Right on the back of the neck of the Pope. Okay. I've asked God. I did not want to just come out and say it. But I've asked the Lord, you know. Is that it? And the answer is yes. The Pope will be the false prophet. Which Pope? I don't know. Um, they're all false prophets. But in the end of the world, there will be the false prophet. And it's going to be the Pope. He's going to try and rally all the world together under one world religious system. He's going to say, hey, we all worship the same God, which is a complete lie from the pit of hell. We don't worship the same God. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. But this is a perversion. It's a perverted form of Christianity. Now, we're going to, so we've got the beast. We've got the false prophet. And let's do the Antichrist. Okay, here we go. Bam. Let's read Revelation. Here we go. And that no man might buy or sell, save that he had, that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. I've already shown you the pyramid equals 666. Watch this. If you have an equilateral triangle, all sides are equal. Let's say it's 6, 6, and 6. 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18. Let's look at this name up here. This name is Barack Hussein Obama. It's all Aramaic. Um, 
more or less Barak means blessing or blessed. Hussein was a grandson of Muhammad, so blessed child of Muhammad. Obama means to be praised, to be worshipped. Blessed child of Muhammad, to be worshipped. Um, the number one enemy of Christianity is the Muslims. Um, here we go. Six plus six plus six is 18. You cannot buy or sell unless you have the name of the beast or the number of his name. The number six plus six plus six is 18. B-A-R-A-C-K. H-U-S-S-E-I-N. O-B-A-M-A is 18. And I would contend to you that I prayed hard about this. And I told the Lord I would not show this to people unless he confirmed it, that Barack Hussein Obama is the man of peace mentioned in the book, in the Bible, and with words of peace, he's going to bring destruction and chaos. That last part of that utterance that the Lord gave me and said, Behold, the fig tree puts forth its leaves, and suddenly the time is upon you. If you continue to read the book of Matthew, Matthew 24, you'll see that there's a parable of the fig tree, and I'm going to leave you to go read it yourself. That way you'll see. Time's up. Okay. I presented the body of evidence. I told you that I would show you the bombings of all our buildings printed on U.S. currency. I think that's happened sufficiently. I told you I would show you who's behind it. It's this Satan and the fallen angels. There is a world conspiracy going on. It's inside of you. The conspiracy is inside of you. The cure, Jesus Christ. Praise God. Jesus Christ is the cure. He died on a cross for your sins. He loves you. He's willing and more than able to deal with anything that you've done. doesn't matter what you've done. He doesn't care. He loves all of us. He wants to save every single person. It says in the Bible, and he desires that not even one, not even one should perish. So this is my appeal. Give your life to Christ. Give it back to him and let him save you and be born again. And just join the Join the group, and we're all going to heaven. And you don't want to be here for tribulations because it's about to kick off. Thank you for your time, and I thank God that God would let me do this for him. Awesome. Anyway, um, I'm going to put up a website. There's a website up. It's called uh, Yahweh's Messenger dot one hundred webspace dot net, where you can go look at basically this book in its entirety and and all these pictures. Okay. Grace and peace. May the Lord be with you and may His face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace, okay? Amen. Take care. All right.